Hello and welcome to Arab TV. I'm Vic Zukur, your host today. Um, I'm so proud and so happy to have a guest from our community who is a city council member elect. John Nikamis, welcome to Arab American. Thank just, you for having me, Victor. And I just want to say that we are so proud as Arab Americans to have one of our own to reach such an elite position with the, with, with, with the city council. So congratulations on your win. And uh, we're just going to be talking in this program to introduce um, uh, our viewers about yourself, what are your goals, basically, um, what are you going to be achieving, and to talk about the experience that you had in, in the election process and stuff like that, because it will be an inspiration for our community. Okay, so, so I'd like you to start with giving me a, a background about you. Um, you know, where were you born and raised and stuff like that. Sure, sure. And, and I'm sorry I don't look as good as you today. Thank you for having me. My, um, my background is I was born in Beirut, Lebanon, and my parents and I immigrated uh, early. Uh, my parents are both Palestinian, and we immigrated to the United States when I was uh, almost eight years old. Uh, when I, um, we came straight to San Jose, I've been living in San Jose for the last 37 years. Uh, I've uh, lived all over in District 10, which is uh, the city council seat that I um, ran and uh, won. And uh, I've, you know, I'm very happy uh, to have lived here all these years, and I want to make uh, San Jose a better place for my children and hopefully theirs. And uh, so uh, I've uh, built two businesses in downtown San Jose. I've been a financial advisor uh, for 18 years, helping companies save money, and I've, I have great ideas on how to help the city save money. So I wanted to use my ideas, my knowledge. I've also have uh, 14 years uh, uh, basically serving on boards and commissions uh, for the county, for the city, and for our homeowners association. So I've had many, many years of experience on that. I've served on the Human Relations Commission for Santa Clara County for 10 years. I was voted the Human Rights Leader of the Year in 2007 in Santa Clara County. And uh, I, again, I've, uh, I'm, I, was the, I am the chairman of the Small Business Development Commission. I'm about to resign as of uh, tomorrow, in fact. Oh, wow. uh, and so, um, uh, so I've, I've had a, a rich history of volunteering my time and for our community and for, for uh, um, and, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, working and serving our citizens. Fantastic. And by the way, don't worry about how I look because we're in the Silicon Valley and and nobody wears wear ties anymore. Somebody uh, take my tie off. Okay. Oh, no. So that you, you don't feel that bad. Okay, there you go. That's better not. Oh, well. <laughs> so anyways, uh, um, so, so you told me about your, your... Did you go to school in San Jose? Absolutely. I went to uh, 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 George Minor Elementary School uh, and Herman Junior High and Oak Grove High School. I also uh, studied uh, at San Jose State University, uh, and I got my uh, bachelor's degree in uh, business management back in 1991. Fantastic. And, and, you know, you've been a successful businessman. You've got two businesses. You've been busy. You've got a family. Tell us about your family. Well, I have a, a lovely wife that uh, is, uh, is the, my biggest supporter, my, my, my closest and uh, my closest advisor, and uh, my best friend. Um, and we are blessed to have two young children um, who are uh, now uh, 11 and 8 years old. One of them uh, is in elementary and the other one's in middle school. Uh, and I'm very much uh, like to be involved in their life too. I'm, in Boy S I'm helping them with Boy Scouts and Lego Robotics. And um, it's just, uh, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, a, it's the best job that I've ever had. And, and you know, like you've got a busy career, I know. You've, got, you've been involved in, in, in all kinds of different activities related to the community. Wasn't that enough? I'll mean, tell you why. Because I used to live in Pinol, and I used to know the mayor and some council members, and we used to go and walk or stuff. And they said, Vic, why don't you run for city council? So I go to my wife, I said, you know, this is what they're asking me. She said, Vic, what night of the, of the week are you free? <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's really a lot of responsibility to, to, to do what you're doing. 
Yeah, it, you're absolutely right. And uh, quite frankly, um, I couldn't do it without the support of my wife and family. It is, it, and, and uh, you know, I just come from a place that if I don't, if I'm not doing something, then I feel like I'm not living my life to its fullest potential. Yeah. I've always felt a need to do more. I need to give back to the community. I need to uh, make, make my surroundings and the world a better place. And I'm doing my small, very small part to do so. I know you're doing a lot. Actually, you know, you helped the Arab American Cultural Center get our facility, you know, in San Jose. And it was through your efforts and with your knowledge of how the things work with the city that we were able to get it. So, so that's another thing that you've achieved for the community, which is really a beautiful center for those who haven't seen it. You know, um, we've got uh, two big halls. Uh, we have, uh, we're close to the playground for the children, sport facilities, camping areas at the hockey, hockey park. And, uh, you know, that, all of that is because of, of what you've done for us. Um, well, I, I don't want to take all the credit. I worked with a lot of people on that issue. I, I, um, I was one of the driving forces, but I, I cannot take all the credit. There was a lot too. of people uh, Thank you. who worked you're, on that. You're, you're humble. Thank you for that. Um, so, so what I want to ask you is, is uh, uh, you know, I mean, as I said, you've been doing all kinds of things. What happened that suddenly you wanted to get into city council? Well, quite frankly, you know, I've been a financial advisor for 18 years, and I've been uh, and and like and I've been involved in city politics for quite some time, and I've seen the way our our budget has been managed, uh, especially in in the area where we were talking about, um, you know, the way they spent the money on city hall, the pensions, and how how uh, a lofty they were. So I wanted to do my part to make sure that the city gets gets out of its structural budget deficit, which is something that I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about because all we have been doing is laying off police officers, closing libraries, closing parks, and I didn't want to see that trend continue. We have an annual budget deficit of $22.5 million, and I wanted to do whatever I could to help uh, uh, the mayor and the city council uh, cut costs without cutting any more uh, jobs in the city. And that's what motivated me most, uh, my, my deep interest in helping the city uh, with its financial uh, problems. So, so, so you saw that need, and you knew you, knew you could contribute with, with your knowledge and what have you. Um, when did you decide to, to run? And how did you start, you know, the process? Actually, I decided to run quite some time ago. Um, and I, what I did was um, I, I talked it over with my wife, and she decided to support me. And she said, well, if this is what you want to do, I, I'm with you. So what I did was I started uh, going to all the homeowners association meetings in the area. So I would attend at least one or two or maybe sometimes three meetings a week the Seniors Association, the Hoffman Viamonte, the Playa del Rey, all these community association meetings I got involved uh, with uh, in preparation to, so that I could learn the needs of the community firsthand. Um, I made friends with a lot of people on those boards and uh, they, they, uh, you know, they knew that I was there um, the whole time. So they, they had faith that I, that I did care about their needs um, above all the other candidates that I ran against and, and, and that's, why, uh, that's what I did to prepare for that. So, so, so at that time you weren't even in the running, I and mean, you just went there as a citizen. As, absolutely, I went there as a citizen for the first two years before I put my name on the ballot. I went there. To, I just met people, and I said, "I'm thinking about running. What are your concerns? Um, please let me know. And when I decide, I'll let you know." And so, uh, and so, I built a relationship with quite a few of the homeowners associations. In doing so, I made good friends with them, uh, the leadership there, and uh, and they all, you know, a lot of them did support me in the end. Wow. And by the way, you know, what you're telling me here is something I want our viewers, especially those people who are interested in politics, to kind of like learn from this and, 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 and you know, it will be, it'll be something like for them a career or a roadmap for achieving and coming, in, you know, and participating in city politics. We need more people, whether from our community or smart people from any other community, too you know, do what you did and be part of, of, of government in, you know, in, in our city. Um, so, so the first thing you said, you went to those meetings, you got to know the, the, what are the needs of the community, correct? Yes. Okay, next, what did you do? Well, next, uh, we decided to look at my list of people who I thought could be potential uh, supporters, contributors uh, in, in, in um, 
either financially or otherwise. So I put together uh, what they call a kitchen a kitchen cabinet advisory team. And, and in fact, it was in my kitchen <laughs> that we did all the, it was a real kitchen cabinet uh, yeah. uh, team. We put together and we said, hey, you know, this is what we plan on doing. Do you think you can help with this? Do you think, and we had several meetings at my home and uh, we discussed it for uh, a few more months before I put my name on the ballot. And, uh, and, then, and then it came time to execution. Those people who volunteered, we had their names. We said, okay, time for you to help me reach out to those people who you said you could reach out to um, you know, when we met the last time. And so um, that's what we did. We put together a great team of, of volunteers um, and a lot of them, uh, you know, a lot of them came through for me. Were they personal friends or people from the community or from the homeowner associations or? All of the above. We had people from, uh, from homeowners associations, the PTA, my, my son's teachers, my, um, uh, uh, my clients, my uh, friends, my uh, uh, people who served on boards and commissions with me. Uh, they were all invited and uh, I, I took all their advice and uh, we've, and they, again, we pulled, we pulled a team together. We narrowed down how many people, you know, some of them dropped away, uh, you know, and some of them did less than others, but, uh, but I'm grateful to everybody's support. That's fantastic. Now, you've got a core of people to help you. Where did the money come from? You, know, you need money to do this, or do you? Well, absolutely. You know, we did raise uh, 105000 in the primary. We raised 119000 or close to that, uh, in the general election, uh, and we spent all of it. There's not a penny left, actually. Um, most of it came from me. I put in 64,000 of my own money into this uh, election because I'm, I'm, I'm very serious. You know, when I set my mind to something, I actually uh, I put my whole heart, my, I put everything in it, my heart, my soul, my efforts, and my money so, so that everybody knows um, that, uh, that nobody has more at stake than me. Um, and so I, uh, I made sure that, uh, that I had the campaign funded enough uh, to win. And, I, uh, and, I, and I'm happy for the generous support of hundreds of people. I mean, literally hundreds of people poured money into my campaign, especially in the last month. Um, it was, you know, every day we had a minimum of $1,000 came in the door in the last two weeks. $1,000 a day. It was uh, an incredible, um, uh, dramatic uh, increase in, in contributions. Um, and, uh, but before that, I had... Lots of people do donating from five dollars to ten dollars. They had coffees for me. They had uh, uh, they walked precincts for me. Uh, so I, I was very, very delighted to have uh, a lot of grassroots support. You know, from Aristia Pettis, who is a, a, a Greek lady from uh, from the Greek Orthodox Church on Saint Basil, who actually opened up her home. She walked precincts. She donated hundreds of dollars. Wow. She she uh, introduced me to the Greek community. She did a lot for me, and I had numerous of stories people stories of people just like her. And again, she was she's de delightful. She's a, a, a delightful lady to have on my uh, uh, campaign team. Okay. So this is all nice and cool. Now, it takes an, you know, some professional advisor to get your strategy going, your strategy going and, and your plans and stuff like that. Did you do it on your own? Did you have people who advise you? On I had, uh, in the beginning, level? I had a, a gentleman by the name of Ray Rodriguez, who is my photographer, but he has dabbled in politics for many years and he did have some good advice at the beginning. Uh, but I did hire a professional campaign uh, advisor. His name is Victor Ajloni. Um, who, who was a fantastic uh, asset to the team. He uh, advised me on, uh, on many things. He had a lot of connections to a lot of people, and uh, he advised me on, on our, our campaign strategy. He advised me on uh, the literature, what to, you know, what to say on our website. Um, he, you know, we, you know, this is a professional campaign manager that has, has a proven track record, and I hired him because of that. Well, I did call him on the night of the election when we knew you were winning, and I said, you know, uh, Victor, you know, Johnny is winning. Do you want to come and do a TV show with me? He said, no, do it with, the, <laughs> with Johnny. <laughs> Victor doesn't like to take a lot of credit. He <laughs> likes to stay behind the scenes, but uh, he's done a lot. He's done a lot for our community, and I thank him so much. He's done a lot for the um, Arab American community. He's, he's done a lot for the public in general. Um, he, Again, I couldn't have done it without his advice, and, and, uh, and I'm really happy that I hired the right guy for the job. And he also, I think, helped in 
in the effort to get the Arab American Cultural Center in San Jose. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, he was instrumental. Yeah. He doesn't like to talk about it, but he was yeah. instrumental. Yes. So now, now, now um, what's interesting is, is, you know, people, sometimes they say, you know, it doesn't matter if I vote or if I don't. And then, you know, here comes the primary and Johnny Kamis wins with how many votes? I, I came in first place by one vote. Uh, one vote. One vote. And, uh, and I made sure to tell everybody that I knocked on their doors that their vote mattered. Their vote mattered. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody knew if they voted for me, their vote mattered. And uh, luckily, I, didn't need, I, I won by a lot more than one vote in the, in the general election. We were, were at least 1,600 points ahead Fantastic. of our opponent. But, uh, but you know what? There is no better result than that uh, to show people how important it is to, to vote for the person or the, uh, the, the topic that you're, you have convictions about. Um, it is, it's, it's so important. Otherwise, you know, whatever it is that you are passionate about will lose. So now, now, now let's go back to the important subject. In your campaign, what was your platform? What were you running for? I was, uh, you know, I was in my platform was fiscal responsibility, my fiscal leadership. Um, and, uh, uh, and of course, uh, the city council has, you know, um, has had many problems with the financial uh, budget uh, over the last, uh, say, six years or so. And uh, that's why it, it resonated well. The, the, the message of fiscal leadership, financial leadership, resonated well with the public. Who was your competition? Um, in the general election, uh, it was Robert Bronstein. Whose background is uh, uh, the sports? Uh, yes, he's a sports broadcaster. Sports he does a television show uh, uh, called Cal High Sports that's on TV, and it highlights uh, uh, athletes uh, uh, in high school. So he's a you know, very visible person in the community with this TV show, and he's still able to beat him, you know? That, that, that's very impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, again, th this was not done without hard work. Uh, of besides the money that we raised, we knocked since the general election, since the primary, since April, we knocked on 16,000 doors, 16,000 wow. doors. And um, I tell you, we, we got about 1,200 emails out of that effort. We, we were able to put up 1,000 signs. Uh, we, we, we worked hard. There's no substitute, and I could tell this to your viewers, to anybody who's looking for, to run for political office. There's no substitute for hard work, none. And uh, if you think that you're going to put your name on a ballot and uh, hopefully uh, somebody will pick you, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's ridiculous. You have to put your heart and soul into whatever it is that you're doing, otherwise you're going to lose. Okay, so, so, so we talked about the, the general election. Now, in the primary, who, you were running against one person or more? I was running against five people. Five? Yes. Uh, oh. Five people, and, uh, you know, we split the vote almost 20%. Uh, well, I came in with 20%. Um, so did Robert, came almost 20%. Um, but the rest were less. Uh, you know, I, there were several people who ran against uh, me in the primary. And uh, was there an incumbent in this? Uh, no, there's no incumbent. It's an open seat. Nancy Pyle's termed out seat okay, in District okay, 10. Out, I see. Okay, so now, now, now you had some priorities if elected, and you talked about the fiscal, I mean, the, the budget. What, yes. uh, what else? Well, you know, besides the budget, the number one concern for our community is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, safety. And so it is very important for me to increase the uh, uh, number of police officers on the force. It's very important to me to open the substation in, in, the, in the, so, the, so, the southern substation, which will increase response times uh, to our area and um, hopefully make police officers happy because they have to commute a lot less uh, to get to uh, their destinations. So um, that is a major priority of mine. I will, I, after, of course, the budget gets under control and the reforms come through, um, hopefully we'll have a little bit of money to spend on reopening some of the libraries uh, especially the brand new ones that have not been open. Um, I want to I want to open the parks at least uh, one or two more days a week. That would be great. Uh, they're they're closed uh, three days a week, and uh, and so are the libraries. And I, you know, so, those were my top priorities. So, so how does this work? I mean, you said I want to do this, I want to do that. I mean, do you dictate with the council uh, uh, what's the agenda and what you want to do, or you know? How, no. Just take a specific example. I mean. 
How would you go about opening the libraries that weren't open? Well, first, what would happen is uh, we'd have to have the money to do so. And once we, do, once we identify how much money we have, then the city council decides what are our priorities. And my voice will be one of 11. And uh, hopefully my voice, uh, since I've, made, I've already made friends, I've had phone conversations with almost every single council member already. Um, and we, uh, you know, I've, I've expected interest in, in talking and working with, uh, um, like I said, almost all of them. And I feel that we have a coalition that is strong. Now, of course, uh, one council member is going to be fighting for their library in their area to be open more hours. And so we're going to have to work things out and, 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 and do things in a fair manner. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different districts and different libraries. Exactly. So you have to get, you know, maybe priorities and find out what is more uh, important to the people as far as maybe numbers or... Yeah, or, we have to ident identify, you know, which libraries are, uh, for example, if we're talking about libraries, which libraries uh, need to be open longer hours, which libraries, uh, for example, are completely unopened and it would benefit, okay. and that area would benefit from. I'm going to ask you maybe another very intelligent question, so... Don't uh, get upset with me. <laughs> um, you know how we heard about Democrats and Republicans, uh, you know, fighting and getting, you know, I mean, this past election. Do we have that kind of thing with the city council? And uh, what is the, you know, like if we do, are all the, the members half Democrat, half Republican city council members, or what's the, you know, what's the composition? Well, uh, the interesting thing is, is there was there was only one Republican on city council up until I got elected. Now there's two out of eleven, so there's never been uh, a, a Democrat Republican divide there. The, the Democrats have been in complete control for many many years. Um, it's the ideal the the, uh, the 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 fiscal conservatives against the people who uh, want to increase your taxes and potentially uh, waste money. Uh, the, the, so the fight is between fiscal responsibility and those who uh, don't have those uh, ideals at heart. So that's where the real fight is. For example, uh, Chuck Reed, many think that, that he's a Republican, but he is actually a, uh, a Democrat. And he, he, you know, he's been accused of being uh, too drastic, but he's dealing with a budget situation that has been dealt to him, and he's trying to do his best. So uh, I, I think I fall into the line of people who want to do what's best for the city, uh, what's fiscally responsible. Okay, and uh, um, you know, there's a question that, that I had prepared for you and it's kind of like uh, now you've probably answered it. Um, the uh, money, so, so you know, if you find the money, oh yeah, I know. Your, your, your stand on Proposition A and, and, I mean, on Measure A and Proposition 30. You had a video about that. What was the, the, what did you say in the video before the election? Well, on Proposition 30, I was against it because uh, I thought that the money in, 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 the, in California often doesn't get to the schools. Uh, and I, I don't have a lot of trust in our state assembly. Uh, for example, what I said about the Proposition 30 is, why are we talking about increasing taxes uh, so that we can go to school when we spend eight billion dollars on a light uh, on a high-speed rail going from nowhere to nowhere and so i felt that it was very that that california uh, legislature often acts irresponsibly with our money and therefore uh, i didn't feel comfortable giving them more um, and as far as measure a is concerned i believe that was the um, the sales tax for the the the, the county and again uh, the county hasn't proven to me that they had their fiscal house in order either, and uh, at least San Jose was getting on its way. But um, but uh, again, that passed. So um, both of those measures passed. So that they uh, now we'll see how well our money's being managed, or if they're going to come back and ask us for more taxes next uh, next uh, two years. I mean, you know, the problem is, is is we need services in the city, and in the in the country, and 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 this country is not based on on owning the resources, you know, the oil and what have you, you know, it's all publicly owned. So, so the government cannot operate without taxes. And if you need services, you need security, you need to, to sweep your street, and you need to have parks, and you need to have libraries, and, you, and schools, you're going to need to pay for it. And where does the money come from? Taxes. Mm -hmm. So why, why do you think we should not uh, increase the taxes for those? Reasons? Well, we're already one of the highest states for taxes. Okay. We already... Um, we, are, we have the highest income taxes, we have the highest sales taxes, 
And, um, and my, my thinking is, um, is that it doesn't matter how much taxes you give government. They will expand to meet and exceed their tax income. Um, because the people there who are elected are only there for four years or eight years. They'll spend away not thinking about our future uh, and where, where these big projects will end up. Like if you, if you look at City Hall, our former mayor decided to spend a billion dollars on City Hall, not knowing where the heck that money was going to come from because his ter he was going to be termed out and didn't care after that. So when you have leaders who don't care about where the money's coming from in the future, that's, that's what bothers me most. Um, we get into all kinds of irresponsible projects that uh, may look good on the outside, but will tie us into long-term financial commitments and cause us to waste money in the future. So that's, that's, my, that's my resentment when it comes to raising taxes. If I thought government was being managed well, I would be on, in favor of what, whatever taxes. Now, I wasn't uh, completely uh, out of favor of some of the taxes. I thought, uh, for example, the uh, bond, uh, school bond uh, taxes are often um, well-placed because they keep the money local and there's, they have specific goals. And that's, that's the kind of stuff that I look at. But if you're just going to give money to the, uh, you know, the general government, they can spend it any way you like. There's no controls as to how it's being spent, and it can be spent unwisely. Yeah, but if it is specifically geared or allocated towards schools or hospitals or police, isn't that something that, that you, you want to support? If, if, in fact, I saw a, 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 a tax that I thought was... Uh, going to be managed wisely, I would be more leaning in favor of it. But that tax, those two taxes were general obligation taxes. Okay. So it's very nice. Now we've got one more minute and I need your advice to our viewers on what you like us to do as, as people to help you, you know, uh, succeed mm -hmm. and with your, you know, with your, with your uh, goals and what are you going to do also, you know, to, to achieve that? Well, since, since many people have uh, put their faith in me that I, I will do my best to get the, our fiscal house in order, I want people to um, sign up on my web website and I will keep them in touch. I will have lots of service, community service projects that I will be part of, planting trees. Um, I will keep people informed about money being spent in our city so that, w so that they can have a say-so. And they'll let me know how they think before I make my decision. And one last thing, would you plan to run for mayor? It's not in the cards right now, no, Victor. Right now. <laughs> no, I want to get settled into city council before. Okay. <laughs> Johnny, thank you very much. We've nearly finished our time right now. So I really appreciate you. Congratulations again. Thank you, Victor. And I wish you all the success and I hope everything will go well for you and you achieve your goals. And thank you, California. Thank you, San Jose. Thank you, the Arab American community for having Johnny Hamish to be, you know, a city council member. Thank you so much. All right.